how should a really good prosthesis actually be aligned? What mistakes are made so often? In this video, we will go through all the steps together, get rid of the common mistakes once and for all, and peek into the scientific literature to understand the prosthetic alignment methods on an expert level. <laughs> In order to understand the process of alignment on a deeper level, we have to ask ourselves, what is the goal? No, really, what is specifically the goal? To put it simply, to restore the standing and walking ability. We want to achieve a physiological knee function and to fit the prosthesis so good that the user loses the sense of being amputated while living just a normal life. Wouldn't that be great? Generally speaking, the overall alignment of a lower limb prosthesis is divided into the workbench alignment, the static alignment and the dynamic alignment. The workbench alignment is exactly what you think, aligning the components of the prosthesis to a given set of rules in all three spatial planes. That's it, just some Legos with additional degrees of freedom. Before we start, we look at the two main sources of information we have the individual patient data you collected during the casting or scanning and the manual of the components you want to use. For the alignment, you want to gather the distance from the ground to the tibiofemoral joint space, the effective heel height of the shoe your user is wearing, test for contracture specifically at the knee and take optional pictures of the stump. We start from bottom to top. First step is to set the correct heel height. This is the heel height we measured earlier. Some manufacturers recommend to add an additional 5 mm to the heel height. Why? This increases the default plantar flexion of the foot and therefore increases the knee stability, so that our highest priority, the user's safety, is absolutely guaranteed. Now we align the foot according to our rules. Let's start in the sagittal plane. The rule here specifically depends on the manufacturer, so look at the manual. The most used rules are to find the middle of the foot length and let the reference line fall 3 cm behind. Or split the foot into thirds and let the line fall between the dorsal and the middle third. So look at your manual. In the frontal plane it is good to aim for an external rotation of 5 to 7 degrees. Either you use a goniometer to measure it out or use the scale on your alignment device. The supination and pronation should be neutral so that the middle of the foot has ground contact. For your reference line you can use a laser, a simple string with a weight on it or a more advanced alignment setup. Like this. Now we jump to the socket. First of all, we need the correct height. Good that you took the measurement during your casting or scanning session. In many cases the distance from the ground to the tibiofemoral joint line is used. Just make sure to measure from the heel space that you are using. If you are measuring from the ground, you have to subtract the 5 mm we added earlier. If you are not sure, you can roughly orientate yourself on the lower edge of the patella. Some prosthetists like to reduce the height of the prosthesis for about 5 to 10 mm in order to increase the toe clearance for the patient. If you are unsure, please talk to an experienced colleague. Now we align the socket in all three planes. We have to divide the socket in the sagittal and frontal plane exactly in the middle. Please ensure that the socket is also rotated correctly to ensure that the reference line is not shifted to the side. Sagittally, we mark the reference point 2 cm above the tibiofemoral joint space. This is the pivot point of the knee, on which we will be tilting the socket. How much? That depends. 5 degrees plus the individual knee flexion contractor your user might have. This ensures that there is enough extension reserve left over during the gait. That means our reference line now goes through this point with our individual flexion tilt and the reference line on our prosthetic foot, depending on the instructions from the manufacturer. That is the sagittal workbench alignment. Manageable, right? In between, always check if your socket is rotated correctly. The front to mid line can be a bit tricky. This alignment should be physiological, so no adding or subtracting any values. You can also measure the adduction angle during your scanning and casting process. The medial lateral alignment should be the following. Between the first and the second toe through the lateral to mid patella edge. And after you check the rotation again, we are finished. Even though there are clear guidelines for the bench alignment, there are still common mistakes which are being made way too often. A balance between dynamics and safety. Did somebody ever tell you that you have to choose between dynamics and safety of your prosthesis? A prosthesis should always be safe. Always. 
you can of course later on adjust the alignment and tune the gate pattern. But safety is always priority number one. The prosthesis needs to stand on its own. Sounds sensible, right? We can stand on one leg, therefore our prosthesis needs to do the same. Wrong. Some do, some don't. This says nothing about the quality of your prosthesis. Just go by the book. Every user is unique and some require adaptations in order to max out their potential. But before you do that, you have to learn the basics well enough in order to know when to deviate from the book. Not giving yourself enough time to learn and practice. Prosthetics can be difficult. Every user has their own needs. You need to build a few prostheses for your experience to grow. That is completely normal. So don't beat yourself up when something does not go according to plan. The typical bench alignment method you just saw is not the only one out there. I'm gonna explain briefly two other popular methods and we look at the scientific literature, which of these are the best. The vertical alignment axis method uses a different approach. When we draw all the different planes in your prosthesis, we get an intersection line between all the planes. This line is described by the VAA method, the vertical alignment axis, and is used as the main reference. Using this line, we place the socket center right onto it and the prosthetic foot along the line at the intersection between the middle of the foot and the last third. Adjust for socket flexion and rotation and you have your alignment. The anatomical based alignment method or short ABA uses anatomical landmarks as its main reference. Either a standing frame or in supine position, the alignment is transferred on the cast using the alignment rods. This aligns the hip, knee and ankle joint center on a straight line. A simple way with clearly defined landmarks on the user itself. So what is the best method? These studies tried to find out exactly that. Ikeda et al. recruited seven unilateral below knee amputees on which all three alignment methods were tested. Rising et al. recruited five. The biggest difference was shown at the frontal alignment, in which the traditional bench alignment and the ABA method needed the least amount of adjustments. But considering the wide range of patients and different experience levels, the VAA method needed overall the least amount of tweaking. This is very useful when you're building monolimb prosthetics, which are hard to tune after the fabrication. In summary, it all comes down to your own preference. All three methods can provide you with a sufficient guideline for your alignment and a good foundation on which to learn on. See you next time at Got It! <laughs>